Hello, welcome to this lesson in Calculus 1 Limits. In the last section, we discussed the formal definition of a limit, and I think now you probably have a decent understanding about what a limit is and what that definition means that's in almost certainly every calculus textbook ever, ever written. Okay? In this lesson, what we're going to do is talk about limit laws. And in fact, a lot of these things that we're writing down, you've actually already used before as we were solving limits in the past, but I didn't really um, make it so clear that it was a limit law. You know, Sometimes if you overwhelm a student with a bunch of laws in the beginning, it just gets more cumbersome. You already have some experience with limits in doing these things. So now we're going to write down formally what these uh, limit laws are so that you can kind of internalize them and see um, in your head, or at least try to remember what is legal when you're solving limit problems. So um, the first one is called the sum rule. And it's something that you have certainly seen before. And what that means is if you have the limit as x approaches a of two functions, one of them is called f of x, and the other one is g of x. And they're added together. So you're taking the limit of the sum of two functions. That's the same thing as the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus the limit as x approaches a of g of x. Now make sure you understand that. What basically I'm saying is if I give you two functions that are added together and ask you to find the limit, then all you really have to do is find the limit as x approaches the same number a of the first function and then also separately the limit of the second function going to the same point and then I can add the results. So it's kind of like if I have a big function that's just a bunch of things added together, I can take the limit of each individual part. And believe it or not, you've already really been doing that, right? Think about a polynomial. Think about x squared plus 2x plus 5. Well, the x squared can be thought of as a function. The 2x can be thought of as another function. And if you have plus 5 or plus 10 or minus 5, that constant thing is another function. It's just constant. And when we were doing limits before, I told you, hey, the first thing, you can make a table or you can just try to plug it in. When you plug in the value into each one of these things, what you're doing is you're finding the limit of each individual function, and then you're adding them all together. So you've actually used the sum rule all, basically all the time uh, without realizing it. But it's a formal uh, limit law, so we're going to write it down. You know, you never know. You may be asked to list these things on a test or something. All right, so we have another one called uh, multiple. If I have the limit as x approaches a of some number, c is a number, times f of x, okay? So this could be 5 times a function or negative 3 times a function. c is just a constant. That's why we call it c. Then basically you can take the constant out and multiply it times the limit as x goes to a of f of x, okay? So what it's basically saying is if I'm taking the limit of a number multiplied by a function, then I can just take that number totally away, take the limit of the function, get the limit, and then go back and multiply. I can basically remove the constant uh, from the outside, deal with it later, and then multiply them at the end. Believe it or not, you've actually done this before too. What if you were doing the limit of, let's say the function is 5x. 5 is a number times x. That's a function, right? How did I tell you to do that? I said, well, go ahead and try to plug it in first. If you get a weird answer, then you have to do something different. Otherwise, that's your limit. Well, when you take and you plug in the value into the function, if it's 5 times x, plugging this in is finding the limit of, in that case, x, as x, as, uh, x approaches whatever number you're trying to approach. You plug it into the value of x, you get the limit, and then you multiply.